Well, hello again from Kingston on a particularly wild night. I thought I'd come out in the evening to make a change and because this is probably the second last of the regular updates. But don't worry, there will be more coverage once the bridge opens. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you at the end and please consider subscribing. The week opened with substantial activity on Lower Gore Road. Bar Construction were making great progress in levelling the old access road and evening the slope. Work involving some finesse in the operation of the excavator. On the other side of the road, Sharp Landscaping's excavator was laying topsoil on what were now the clear margins of Lower Gore. Later in the day, the work would move to the other side and a rather steeper slope. A little further down Gore Road, moving eastward from the abutment, Hewson had deployed a pile driving rig place uprights for a new guardrail. On the south side of the road, where buried infrastructure might be a factor, a different technique was being used to install the uprights. On the west end, gravel removed from the shoreline was being used to back up or to shore up the west abutment. Elsewhere in the west end, redundant concrete objects were beginning to accumulate in the west end of the car park. And the Tadano wheeled crane was setting up to dismantle the first of the bridge buggies. Piece by piece during the day, continuing work begun last week, sections would be removed. There was close cooperation at every stage between a, a technician operating from an elevated work platform or bucket lift and the operator of the crane. What appears to be deceptively simple work must be performed with care and patience if such heavy objects are to be handled safely. While all of this was going on, material was being moved around the site, including this sea can. Tuesday saw the component parts of the first bridge buggy loaded onto a trailer ready for departure. And work begin on disassembling the second. The strong partnership between the technician and the crane operator was again in evidence. MCL continued to contribute to the three R's by loading shoring boxes and removing them from site. With the rock causeway now gone, the task of shaping and smoothing the west shoreline and abutment fell to the big Kiwit excavator. On the east side, in the late afternoon as the light faded, the hard-working team from Hewson continued to install guardrails on Gore Road. Down on the shoreline, as the bar construction team continued work, we saw the one that got away, 
but none of those rocks goes very far and the end result looks great. We probably all have a good idea by now who's hauling the majority of that rock. And Dallas isn't the only person working hard and shifting material. Sometimes it's a little less organic than usual. We can't leave Tuesday without remarking that the completion of work on the Rock Causeway meant that the big excavator from Barr could finally be released. Wednesday may have been one of the wettest and wildest days any of us can remember. It certainly brought a halt to any work over the side of the bridge. A substantial cargo of crane mats was loaded and removed from site, and one of the last remaining large trailers left for employment elsewhere. The rain proved to be no deterrent to the highly motivated maintenance technician disassembling the bridge buggies. And the team from Black and MacDonald concerned with cabling and connecting on the West End seemed to pay it no attention either. In fact, they even went on to the East End to do some further work. The day certainly proved the efficiency of the drains on Gore Road. Thursday didn't make the most promising start with light drifting snow blowing over the bridge. There was a little maintenance work to do on one of the outboard engines. A great deal of effort continued on the remediation of the west shoreline. There can be absolutely no question that it will be left in a better situation when the project ends than it was when the work began. It certainly gets a big thumbs up from you know who. The steady procession of departing trailers continued. A set of restrooms here, a major accommodation trailer there. And if you're still wondering whether the bridge is wide enough, check this out. After careful confirmation that the load was secure, the second bridge buggy left the site as well. And while some find warmth and comfort in the cab of their vehicles, the boat crews are out working the curtains in the wind and the wet. The Hewson team continued their excellent work installing the guardrails on Gore Road. And back on the West End, in a long anticipated move, team from Utilities Kingston commissioned the filter lane traffic lights on Montreal Street. For whatever reason, the gulls around the site do seem to follow the boat crews. There's no shortage of work on the water as the turbidity curtains have to be maintained, removed or replaced occasionally. Friday saw another large accommodation trailer leave the West End leaving just a set of bathrooms in the village. The pace of progress with remediation of the west shoreline raised the suspicion, which proved to be the case, that this would be the last day for the excavator operator on this project. It's been a real pleasure to watch Jeff at work. But the 
big news on Friday was work performed by Utilities Kingston to alter or amend the electricity supply to the area of the bridge. Besides some cable changes, some existing transformers were replaced by others better suited to the anticipated demand. Not far away, Black and MacDonald were engaged in electrical work too, of an entirely different scale. Over on the east side, Park Construction continued their work to level out the former access road to the Rock Causeway. And out on the bridge, west of the steel span, the Genic was put to use working on one of the concrete piers. It had only recently moved from employment to place the navigation marks on the south side of the bridge. Let's go to wildlife watching the boat crew return to the west shore at the end of a busy day. Okay, that's possibly the second last update in the regular series. So I'll see you next week for what should be the last. And again, don't worry, there will be continued coverage. Thanks to everyone who's made these updates possible and who supports the channel. If you don't, well, I'm really sorry to hear that. See you next week. Bye for now.